Hey folks, I know some of you YouTube people are sick of it, but some of you guys can't get enough. So we're gonna talk more about USPSA today. There's been a lot happening the last few days. We got some meeting minutes from uh, last week's meeting, uh, and I wanna talk about that. And uh, Bill Duda at Go Fast Don't Suck made a post which got a, generated a lot of discussion. Uh, so I wanna talk about that too. All right, so let's talk about what happened in last week's meeting. Uh, we know this uh, because we got minutes and uh, Scott and Frank were nice enough to join Joel at uh, the Training Group Live podcast. I'm gonna put a link down in the description if you wanna watch the full podcast yourself or listen to it, whatever, however you consume it is fine. Uh, that podcast is supported by Practical Shooting Training Group at pstg.us. Those of you digital coached type of people, you know all about Training Group. Not everybody does. But if you're interested in uh, digital coaching and a nice little uh, website with lots of information on it, you should check out Training Group. Once again, pstg.us. Okay. So, Scott, the Area 3 Director. Frank, Area 7 Director. Like I said, they joined Joel and... Uh, between the, their conversation and the minutes uh, from last week's me meeting, we can uh, kind of get some idea of what's going on in the organization. The big bombshell, the big surprise for people was Scott Arnberg, the Area 3 Director, making a motion to remove Ted Murphy, the sitting USPSA president, to remove him as president. Um, of course, that didn't go anywhere. <laughs> but just making the motion, uh, I thought that's... Uh, that's pretty interesting. That's like, I was like, why would he do that? I don't understand. Now, a little about Scott. Scott's been on the board for a little while now. Uh, Area 3 people had a choice effectively between, uh, I would say Luke Faust was one guy that could have been on. He's a hard charger, kind of heart in the right place, but maybe not as many actual skills as Scott. Scott's got a ton of experience on boards. He's a range master for USPSA. He runs match. He does so much stuff. It's crazy. And he's a financial professional. Um, if I was going to criticize Scott before the election, and this would be, this this was the way I criticized him before the election, I'd say, hey, I think Scott thinks he's going to get on the board and talk these guys out of being the way they are. Like he's gonna present them with facts and figures and information and persuasive arguments and they're gonna change what they're doing. In my opinion, that's I think that's what Scott thought he could do or thought was gonna happen. Uh, it's clear now that Scott, Scott fully understands these guys ain't changing. The only, the only way out is you just gotta remove them. Uh, so I think what, uh, the reason he, he uh, made a motion to remove the sitting USPSA president was the president is refusing to sign necessary financial documents in order for them to make financial moves, like to move money that they've already voted on and agreed, that, hey, this money has to move. I think they have an issue with the FDIC uh, deposit limit for insurance. It's I think it's $250,000 per account uh, at a bank. You know, you say you you don't want to have more money than that at one financial institution if you can if you can help it so like just to spread risk around like that kind of stuff like these like ordinary financial moves like nothing really crazy ted murphy apparently refusing to sign the paperwork to do so now if i'm reading between the lines or reading the tea leaves there it looks to me like ted's getting nervous and he doesn't want to sign his name on on documents i think he probably doesn't understand that his hands are already dirty. It really isn't going to matter at this point, and they're not they're not doing anything jacked up this time. But I understand why Ted wouldn't want to sign stuff. Um, yeah. So what the Ted? Or it's not Ted. Like Scott made this motion at the meeting. Hey, let's remove the president. Like I said, of course <laughs> that didn't that didn't go so good. And then uh, the board voted. Uh, I think six to three uh, to remove Scott as the head of the finance committee. And the, what, my understanding is this was just purely and overtly just retaliation <laughs> for what Scott had done. Um, like I said, if you're curious about more about that story, go listen to the training group podcast. Cause it's uh, like, it's pretty interesting. Like you don't get a lot of fun stuff like that happening, but it's like, to me, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm like proud of Scott. Like, hey man, Scott's standing up to these people. This is awesome. Of course, they're gonna remove him from the finance committee. They'll kick him off the board if they get a, 
any kind of pretext to do it. Um, but yeah, that's what that's what's going down in USPSA. Uh, now let's talk about this uh, this post from uh, from Bill Duda, and it's not so much I don't I don't really care what Duda thinks. I think a lot of people don't, but he speaks for a contingent of people, you know that are watching, have been watching the drama the last couple of years, uh, and they don't like it. So I'm going to read his post, and then we'll talk about it. A while back, there was a group of folks that got angry at me for not standing with the band. And I would be one of the band, by the way. Well, why not? It's, it's because I see the actions of this group of people as wholly disgusting. They have consistently personally attacked, twist the truth, and been all around terrible human beings to a sport a lot of us really love. So I'm not eager to join their train of actual destruction of the org. It's recently been pointed out that the org had lapsed on their state filings with the old finance guy. In true adult fashion, they brought it to the org's attention and urged them to fix it. No, not really. What they did was file under the org's name that's been around since the 80s. So that to fix it, the org has to file under a new name and spend a bunch of money correcting all the legal paperwork for the org to the new, slightly different name. Mind you, this is the same group of folks that think one of their members trying to get a national match shut down by going to an anti-gun group about our sport was the right and totally necessary thing to do. Has the org fucked things up on occasion? Hell yes. I've been here for the flashlights before national shit show, the president acting completely shitty, the cameo nonsense, the DNRI being able to ban elected officials, and more. I've generally made fun of it and had serious discussions with the parties involved about the lunacy and what I think should be done to correct it. Sometimes I'm listened to and sometimes not. I can correct things the next election and that's where I take my sentiment when it's time. Folks, this sport is mostly about the volunteers and matches below the national level. Those are the places we all build our friendships and push each other to get better. If these shitbags succeed in their childish campaign of destruction, we will still be there on the range. Keep finding ways to be thankful for your local teams putting together events under whatever banner you enjoy shooting because these folks trying to destroy things can't be bothered. All right, now I, I do disagree with uh, with with Bill, of course. Uh, so the first couple paragraphs, he talked about how the the band people. I, I'm sure I'm in this group are doing actual harm to the organization. We personally attacked. Uh, he said personally attacked the sport. I think that's how he wrote that. that we've been ter all around terrible human beings to a sport a lot of us really love. Trist, twist the truth apparently that's good to know um and then he talked about how uh, the org the organization they uh, one of the one of the funnier things that happened is it came out that the organization uh was not up to date on their delaware corporate filings that they lapsed in 2018 and as soon as that became public somebody like bought up the the uspsa name as a delaware corporation so uspsa to fix their issue, had to refile, slightly change the name, and they have to do a bunch more paperwork. Uh, is that a juvenile thing to do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't do that, and I didn't tell anyone to do that. I don't know who did that, but I think that's juvenile and not really solving problems. But I don't think it's, I mean, it, it's not going, it doesn't matter. It's just, they just have to fix it. It's whatever. I don't think it'll end up being a big deal one way or the other, but it's definitely juvenile. But the other thing that get, that's interesting in here is, as uh, Bill sees our actions as disgusting, because we personally attack people. And I do personally attack people. I sure do. Uh, well, to be honest with you, there's no other way at this point. Like these guys, as Scott Arnberg just learned, like people, people either, they, what do I say? They take the red pill orally or they take it rectally. Like one way or the other, like if you have to deal with these board personalities, the guys on the board, that type of thing, if you have to deal with them and there's conflict, you, you come to understand really quickly. It's like, oh yeah, they're completely unreasonable. Like, oh yeah, they don't actually care what anyone says. Oh, they just do whatever they, yeah, yes, yes. All of that is true. Now you can fit, you can figure that out voluntarily or you can learn it the hard way as far as I'm concerned. But um, yeah, they, the, the personal the personal antagonism from me towards these guys is because I know that like that's the level it's like they say that shit about me all the time and other people like these guys are nasty they're vicious 
they have a huge problem telling the truth. And at this point, they try to communicate as little in public as possible. That's because they're hiding stuff. Now, I don't, I don't claim to be some paragon of virtue. Like I'm not some great person, but like what these guys are doing is actually bad, like really bad. And just like not using naughty no-no words in public, like I don't think that makes you a good person. And for most, in most cases, I think it, these guys are just pussies. Like they, they say really horrible stuff. They do really horrible stuff. They just don't want to do it in public. Like they, like the idea of people like seeing them do it, like that's the problem. So I, I do disagree with Bill about that. Like pretty vehemently disagree about with them about that. And this stuff where he said the same group of folks that think one of their members trying to get a national match shut down by going to an anti-gun group about our sport was the right and totally necessary thing to do. Here, I think Bill's lying. Like, I don't think he's mistaken. I think he's lying. I don't know anybody that, like, liked the idea of some anti-gun group. And he's talking about the Cameo Nationals, some anti-gun group, like, you know, that got on their radar, that situation, apparently. I don't think anybody liked that. I didn't see anybody celebrate it. Nobody I talk to or associate was celebrating the fact that that happened. I don't know anybody like that. I think he's just kind of like making up an opinion and hanging it on people that, you know, isn't really theirs. Now, the next part, like this is the part that to pay attention to. Bill go, goes on in his statement. He acknowledges like, hey, the organization's done all these things. Cameo, the flashlight before nationals, like Troy effectively getting to Ixne, uh, the uh, the president of USPSA, getting rid of Yemen, um, all of this stuff. Like he acknowledges there's a lot of stuff that shouldn't have happened, has happened. But what he says is, hey, I talked to these, uh, I he, he has serious discussions with the parties involved. So that means like face-to-face or private, like some like some kind of private communication with the parties involved. And then he, he does the election. Like you just vote in the elections. This has been the culture inside USPSA, the predominant culture, as long as I've been around, which is a long time at this point, which is you talk to the guys face to face. Like that doesn't make them mad because like, you could talk to the board guys like like in, in any kind of private. If as long as it's private, they don't really get too upset. They might you know decide that they don't like you, but it, it won't really be a problem if you talk to them privately. And then they just vote however they're going to they do whatever they're going to do at the board level. And then that's it. Like you can vote in the, the area director elections. But like that's that's their comfort zone, honestly. Like they like keep all the communication private, keep it one on one. Um, they'll just kind of appease people, kind of grin fuck them a little bit is another way of putting it. And then they do what they're going to do anyway. And you're like, oh, well, I don't agree with that, but I'm going to vote different in the elect- next election, maybe. And this whole thing just keeps perpetuating itself. Effectively, you're allowed to oppose them in a way that's not going to change anything. You're not allowed to be loud and vocal and public and say, hey, no, you guys are lying about this. Say, hey, no, what you're doing, I think it's illegal or whatever. Like that kind of stuff that pisses them off really bad, really, really fast. And I, you know, and I just like the only way to subvert that system, like like that sort of paradigm of like, yeah, I'll just I, I, I emailed my area director and then he emailed me back. Thanks for your input. And I just I'll have to assume that he's taking that as input, which at this point, if you're paying attention, you have to understand. No, they don't. They don't actually care what you say. Uh, the only way to break through that, the you know, the way things work, the only way to break through is to be antagonistic, to do it loudly and do it in public. That's the most important thing. Do it in front of an audience, whatever you're doing. That's why I go at these guys in public, in front of an audience. It's like, no matter what, they at least can't lie about what I said after the fact. And then other people get to, you know, like, ooh, you know, I agree with this or not this or whatever. It just gets the conversation going in a very public way, which I can assure you, they hate. Um, Obviously, Bill Duda got a lot of pushback for this post because, you know, there's a lot of guys that are kind of seeing things my way. And I'll read one post. I thought, I mean, I know this guy. I think this is a very good post. From Thomas Smith, uh, he, he re- in reply to duty, he says, you ask for people to act like adults. Well, I have. I sent numerous letters to the BOD with very little response other than to call me a complainer. I've never been profane, threatening, nor have I called anyone names. My reward for acting like an adult was to get a forced withdrawal out of my Area 2 match by the Area 2 director that acts like a schoolyard bill, bully. What should I try next, Bill? And I should say, what, what Thomas is saying is true. He's, 
He's a, he's, he's a, I think he's a retired, like a, prof, a professional. I think something in finance, I think he's in a, a CPA or something. So he, he actually has some expertise. He looks at what's going on with the board. He has a different opinion. He tries, he tries to talk to these guys and he can't get, he gets nowhere. And, and he gets retaliation anyway, right? Just the fact that he said something, you know, he just disagreed with Leighton in a sustained fashion. Well, guess what? He's not allowed to shoot his area match anymore. Not allowed. And is anybody going to do anything about that? No. But it's like, this is why I'll tell people, like, it's not about the, the antagonism and the profanity that I do. Like, I do that because it just brings more attention to what I'm saying. And it irritates them. They hate it. Like, do I think that any, like, no part of the board, like, really cares about you using uh, salty language? Like, they, that doesn't offend anybody. That's just like, oh, can you believe this guy would say that? That's, that's all an act. And as Thomas is pointing out here, even if you, like, follow their rules, like, whatever, you know, you follow the rules as they, they say they are, you don't get anywhere, you don't get a word in edgewise, they're not going to change anything they're doing, and they're going to retaliate against you anyway. So, yeah. Anyway, oh, one other bit of uh, USBSA news. It looks like the, uh, the lawsuit, I, I believe, is fully funded now. If, if uh, I just saw it flash, uh, anyway, the, the GoFundMe uh, that I interviewed gentleman Travis uh, about uh, last week, I believe it's at the, you know, the funding point that they're gonna take it to a lawyer and get going on uh, filing a lawsuit against the organization so we will see where that goes sorry for the long video but there's you know lots to talk about lots of interesting things happening